everyone, it's Sarah with Registered Nurse RN .com. and in this video I'm going to be talking about body fluid compartments, osmosis, and the different types of IV fluids. So let's get started. IV fluids, also known as intravenous fluids, are special fluids that we administer to the intravascular space, which is part of the extracellular compartment space. And administering IV fluids is a very common treatment that patients get whenever they come to the hospital. And as a nurse, our role revolves around administering these fluids to this space. And we do that per the healthcare provider's orders. And these fluids can be used to treat a wide variety of conditions, really anything that's affecting these compartment spaces where we need to replenish that fluid. Let's say the patient's dehydrated, they may need some fluids to help them with that or they're having electrolyte imbalance or an acid base imbalance. We can use these fluids to help correct that. Therefore, as a nurse, you wanna be familiar with the different types of IV fluids, such as isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. You also wanna know how they work once we administer them to Through the body and what you need to monitor for while your patient's receiving these fluids. But before we go over these different types of fluids, I first want to go back and review the different body fluid compartments. Now the average adult body is made up of about 60 to 70 percent of water. So that is a lot of fluid within our body and this fluid has to be stored somewhere and there are two main compartments that stores this fluid that I want you to remember. The first compartment is known as the intracellular compartment. And this is the fluid that's found within the cell. And intra means within. So remember, this is a fluid inside of our cell, as you can see here. Then we have the extracellular compartment. And this is the fluid found outside of that cell. And extra means beyond or outside. So we're talking about that fluid that is surrounding the cell. And it is made up of the intravascular fluid, which you can see here. This is also referred to as the plasma. 
Then we have the interstitial fluid, which you can see here in blue, and it's just hanging out around our cells. And then we have the transcellular fluid. So now let's take a closer look at these body fluid compartments, with the first being the intracellular space. So again, this was the fluid found inside of the cell, and this space actually counts for two thirds of our body water. So most of our fluid is inside of our cells. And then there's the extracellular space, which again is that fluid outside of the cell. And it accounts for one third of our body water, and it includes the fluid compartment such as the interstitial fluid compartment. And the interstitial fluid compartment is the fluid that surrounds the outside of our cells. And this fluid plays a very vital role in helping be a medium for electrolytes and other substances to move to and from the cell to the plasma with the assistance of the capillaries. And the intravascular fluid compartment, which again is known as the plasma, is the fluid found inside the blood vessels, which contains so many important substances like electrolytes, blood blood cells and so forth. And then lastly, we have the transcellular fluid compartment. And this is actually the smallest compartment. And this is the fluid that is found within certain body cavities, like the spinal fluid, the fluid that surrounds our heart and lungs and the joints. Now it's important to note that these compartments are really all interconnected with their own amount of water and electrolytes. And they will work together to help maintain a homeostatic environment in our body. And how they do this is that they will shift water, electrolytes, and other nutrients around so we can keep that balanced environment. And they do this shifting through various processes in the body, with one of those processes being osmosis. <laughs> Therefore, in healthcare, we can administer IV fluids, let's say, to this intravascular compartment to help expand it if we need to, or shift fluids around these compartments via this process of osmosis to help us correct fluid imbalances or other problems that can occur within intracellular and extracellular spaces. So to help us understand how IV fluids do this, let's talk about osmosis. So osmosis is a process where water is going to move from a fluid of a higher water concentration to a fluid of a lower concentration. In other words, water is going to move from a fluid that has a low solute concentration to a fluid that has a higher solute concentration. And it does this passively. It doesn't need any energy or anything from the cell. It actually does this on its own. And it does it through a semi-permeable membrane, which is only permeable to water molecules. So let's illustrate this process by looking at this drawing. Here we have our semi-permeable membrane, which is only permeable to water. And on one side of the membrane, we have a lot of water molecules, but we don't have a lot of solutes. And on the other side of the membrane, we have not a lot of water molecules, but a lot of solutes. So according to osmosis, what's gonna happen is that water is going to move from a higher concentration of water to a lower concentration of water. Or you can look at it this way. Water is gonna move from the place where there's not a lot of solutes to a place that there are a lot of solutes. Now the big takeaway I want you to get from osmosis is that this process is highly influenced by a fluid solute concentration. And depending on how concentrated that fluid is of the solutes will determine how osmosis is going to affect how water is going to shift from this 